Hey everyone, Trevor here from Richland Electric. I uh, kind of wanted to come to you today because we had a, uh, I guess you would say a unique scenario the other day, which uh, many of you are aware of, is uh, we had a rather large power outage. Uh, it turns out to be that it was on the transmission side, but when something like this happens, you know, we get, uh, we get a lot of phone calls. Uh, a lot of people are wondering what's going on and we do our best to try and uh, try and explain that uh, we got a power outage, whether it be on the transmission side or whether it's something on our side. But uh, I thought this might be a unique opportunity for us to to tell you kind of what went, went what went on. Um, it's not very often that we have something like this, but uh, I thought it'd be good for you guys to hear from what our crew does, or even the people that are in the office. We'll talk to uh, Kurt, at the, our, our line superintendent, Kim, our operations assistant, and uh, Nicole for our billing clerk. So uh, three different perspectives on what actually is gonna be happening here when, when something like that comes in. Uh, you know, obviously we never like to do that. We never like to put our members out, but things do happen. And uh, there's a lot of things that are out of our control, whether it becomes weather related, or if it becomes, like I said, on the transmission side, maybe unfortunately, hopefully there wasn't an accident or anything like that. But uh, I hope that uh, by letting you guys hear what, uh, what comes from them, that this might give you a little bit of perspective on uh, the many different steps or avenues that we have to take uh, in order to make sure that we get power back on and correctly and the communication side of everything. Uh, obviously, you know me as far as kind of doing a lot of the communications, whether it be on Facebook or videos like this, you know, that's that's kind of my role and it's making sure that I, I am relaying the correct information to you uh, so that you can understand what's, what's actually going on or where our crews might be at the time. Uh, if it's a major outage like it was, you know, I'm talking with the radio station to make sure that you guys are informed as fast as possible. And again, to give you kind of a brief understanding of what might be happening. So uh, we're going to I cut this into a couple different pieces of video. So we'll go we'll go talk to Kurt, uh, probably talk to Nicole and Kim next. We'll see how it kind of goes. But uh, uh, like I said, I just kind of piece this together because we're all very busy. Uh, it's hard to get people, uh, you know, to be able to take the time out of their out of their busy schedules to just to just do a little preview for you, uh, give you just a brief explanation of what's going on. So uh, stay tuned and we'll uh, we'll get going on that. All right, thanks guys. Okay, so Kim, yes. had a uh, very unique situation, I guess I'm gonna say the other day, because I don't know when this video is gonna be posted. Yep. Uh, had an outage, not your typical outage of which we would experience here in the middle of the night, storms, power lines, all that mm -hmm. stuff, but uh, more so on a transmission outage. Yes. Uh, a lot more people are involved with this. You know, when we have our outages, it's pretty much just REC, mm -hmm. but with it being dairy lid and a transmission issue, yep. um, you know, we're kind of just doing a video here on what uh, what are the steps, what are the processes that everybody has to do. We've got a lot of people that are playing a lot of different parts yep. when it comes to this. You know, all of them revolve around safety, not only for mm -hmm. us and our crew and our members, but when something like this happens, uh, what's your what's your step? What's your process that you're going to okay. be kind of going through? Well, you know, some of the things that we might notice right off the bat is we have we have a um, the meters the meters now talk to us and they tell us when they're off and not and and on my computer I have a screen up that shows when the meters go out. Sometimes I catch it and sometimes I don't. But on an event like yesterday, probably the first sign would have been the first you know fifty phone calls that would come flying in, which and, is good. Which is good because then we have to identify at that point um, how much is out. In the old days, we would just, uh, we would think, oh, well, we have, we have this line out. And then we, by the phone calls that we received, we would identify that. But now today, with Command Center, we're able to go and actually look at the map, and there's little bubbles that pop up, and it, it populates what is out. And based on that, we were able to identify right away that the whole substation was out. When the whole substation goes out, then you're able to identify, oh, this is probably a Daryland thing. This is a transmission line coming into the substation somewhere at that point then it's up to uh kurt or larry to get a hold of somebody from daryl and say and they already know because they have the same thing that tells them when they have an outage that happens on their line they already know before we do but we have to contact them and then the crews then will go out and we have to figure out how we can back feed portions of the line so that we can get people back on before daryl gets the situation fixed if yep. that makes sense Yep, and we'll and we'll talk to Kurt yep. on uh, explaining how that process works on yep. what the actual switching process right. is what we call it. And switching is not to be done lightly because you can't just go out and flip the switch like you do your light switch in your house. You have to make sure everything is safe and secure and ready to switch that you can backfeed it. For example, getting on the, the school district right away mm -hmm. was really, really important. And we, we can back we have it set up so that we can backfeed it. Um, onto the Rockbridge substation. 
I believe that's where that back feeds to. So there's just all that kinds of stuff. I kind of get stuck in the middle of the, the phone calls and getting a hold of Larry or Kurt and making sure that we are gathering information the way that it should be and that everybody can get taken care of as soon as possible. Right. And so, you know, you're kind of, you know, with the exception of, you know, with Nicole as well or anybody, even Ellen here at the, in the front office is first thing that you're looking at is you're getting the fielding phone calls. I mean, you're like, you're getting people letting us know, yep. which, which again, we can't reiterate enough that Call. calling us is the best thing that you can do. Even if you think that we're overloaded by any means, just keep calling yep. because we need to know. I received um, a couple phone calls on my uh, cell phone. Yeah, absolutely. So. <laughs> uh, we, we receive them, you know, um, especially even on our Facebook messages. If you can't get through, shoot a Facebook message. We'll try to get you the best we can. But phone call is our definitely our number one source. And, you know, between all that, at the, some at some point when Nicole starts finishing up mm -hmm. her calls, that you're going to have to start going and, like, pinpointing where these always are going. Mm -hmm. And then... Relaying that information yeah. to Kurt and updating Larry yeah. on it, so then it goes to he can update That's the right. line crew. With, so it's 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 one great big process. It is. And it's it just is. a step by step process. And but, it's also following up when the line gets back on to make sure that everybody got picked up and everybody is back on when they say that they are. So right, right. that's one other thing that we like to do too at the end is to make sure everybody gets put back on for for their power. But we certainly appreciate all of our members, and um, you know, it's, we'd like to hear from them. And uh, we'll do our best to try to get them served and back on and keep them in power. <laughs> yep. All right. Sounds good. Thank All right. you. Yep. Thanks, Trevor. So, hey, everyone. So what we're talking about here is I actually have Kurt Brockway with me. Um, he is now our line superintendent. So uh, give him a big congratulations on the promotion of becoming a line superintendent. But what we talked about is, you know, we had a substation outage. And on our Facebook post, which you might have noticed, is that we saw or we had stated that we had to do some switching. Uh, a lot of you probably don't understand what that means. So I brought Kurt in here and Kurt's going to tell you, you know, what that actually means when we have a substation outage that we had to do some switching so that we could get more people back on at one time as opposed to working all night, uh, especially since it's, it's a transmission issue. So Kurt, when we, when we talked about this switching, I guess, is what you, that's just the common term of yep. what we're doing. Yep. What, what is the main purpose of that? What are we actually trying to do? The main purpose, we're, we're uh, tying interconnecting substations, so we have ties between substations, and we actually have, we, we can't tie all the subs together, but, uh, you know, we can tie multiple subs together to pick up the circuits that are out of Boaz. So we picked up part of it from Rockbridge last night on a three-phase tie, and we also picked part of it up from the Eagle substation in order to pick up our south and west circuits and then off our ash ridge substation we have tie points it's where the two substations meet together out in the country they phase together which is a little bit more technical but we can throw some switches in we can basically if you got the terminology of back feeding i mean it's you can tie and back feed things in order to isolate a, a troubled area so it's, it's working exactly the same way when we talk about the grid, you know, they're all tied together in one way or another. So you brought, you brought power from what two sub, substations again? Rock Eagle Ridge, and Rock, Rock Ridge. Ridge and Ash Ridge. And Ash Ridge, and okay. And that fired up all of Boaz members. Okay, so then what, what goes into that? Do you have two guys that are in certain spots? You know, obviously you gotta, you gotta bring lines, you gotta bring power from different directions. Uh, you know, it's what's the what's the scenario? What are our guys doing? Are they just you know hooking up different connections there? We're isolating the Boaz substation first off. That was the transmission problem that fed the Boaz substation, and you know the transmission companies can do different ties, but the way their outage worked last night, it was you know hour and a half to two hours for them to turn transmission back on. We felt we could do the switching quicker. So we isolate the substation, Boaz, we open all of our circuits up there. And then we go, we had two man, two two-man crews last night that uh, worked in conjunction with each other. One would be at one open point. They'd open, this one would close, vice versa. Need be, we can do it with one crew. It's pretty, uh, we've got it down pretty efficiently. Sure. It's laid out, you know, how your, how your uh, service territory is fed. And it's, you know, it, it's pretty nice. For everybody out there to look at uh, 
five six hour outage and right. we can probably have you back in power and within an hour and a half yep but there's a lot of safety there a lot of communication that's going on back and forth like you can't just throw one in and then the other person can't be ready for it there's got to be constant communication between the two crews safety is always involved with that as well yeah so. that's exactly correct yeah. you know, so it's uh, always a two-point communication here uh, i understand you open this now i'm going to close that repeat it back and that's through the office through the workers as well yep yep so that's what we kind of had going on last night is we had a substation outage and you know we can't reiterate enough that the the best thing that you can do is when you do have an outage is to always call us first. You might not get through. Our phone lines might be really busy, but that's the number one source. And I uh, just kind of wanted to give you a little bit of feedback on how something like this affects, you know, thousands of members, basically is what it was, and how we were able to get them back in in such short time. Um, you know, a lot goes out to these crews that pretty much knew exactly what kind of training they had to be doing on. They do train on this regularly, uh, having to do switch training in the event that this does happen. But... I, it's not a very common situation as far as a substation outage, I wouldn't think. Um, no. You know, so um, by being able to do this training, that's what allowed us to be able to do this. And so, again, credit goes out to those guys uh, and for you guys as well on calling us to make sure that we had this. And uh, we do have the systems that we, we know a lot of these, but we just we can't, we can't reiterate enough that calling us is the best way to go first at 608-647-3173. Thank you. So, Nicole, we had doing this basically based on what the outage was that we had on Tuesday or on Monday. We had that big substation outage pretty much right towards the end of the day. Uh, you know, it sounds like that's how they work anymore. But uh, uh, different like when Kim and I had talked is that it's not a regular outage. It's a substation outage, which means a vast majority of people are out at one time as opposed to little sections here and little sections there. Uh, when, when we get something like that, you're going to be very busy for a very short amount of time. Yes. So when when that happens, what's what's your day like? What are you, what are you looking for? What's yeah. what, what's coming? So what happened is we we the phone just started ringing. I mean, it wasn't just one call. It was many lines coming in. Um, we do have a system. So the first call that came in, I automatically went to our OMS or outage management and looked, and I could see there were several people out. Um, so when I take those calls, I verify their address. I get any other information, like some people hear a loud bang or, you know, they seen a tree down. I get that information so I can relate to the crew. So on that particular outage though, um, they were coming in so fast. I, even though they're showing up, I still enter them because we want to see what calls are coming because we want people to call us. It's important that they call us. Um, so I put, I looked, I seen that yeah, they're part of, you know, they're part of this outage we're experiencing. Um, I wanted to make sure that the line crew knew as soon as possible. This was like just a few minutes before four o'clock. The calls were coming in so fast. I just said to quick, quick text to Kurt Brockway outage. That's all I put. He mm -hmm. understood it. Um, so the calls did just kept coming in for over an hour nonstop. Um, luckily the crews, they were able to kind of figure out what the problem was. Um, so when calls came in, I could just kind of give people a, a time frame, but that's not always possible. Right. Um, I know when people call in, they want to know right away what the problem is and how long, but we don't always know that. We got to get the crews out there, but it is very important that people are calling us. Mm -hmm. um, I know some people think, oh, are my neighbors out, they'll call. Not always the case. Um, with that case, our crews are going to be going home in a couple minutes. So... Um, it was good that we caught them before they left. And the reason we caught them before they left because we were getting those calls. Right, right. We were, you know, able to get it right away and get those calls. So when we when we get those phone calls, um, obviously, you know, we have very limited staff here. You know, uh, we've handled it very well, you know, between Amy, Ellen, Kim, and you, you know, the, the phone lines can still be overloaded. Oh, yeah. um, when you have thousands of people out at one time, which again is a very rare um, scenario, and it usually does result in a substation outage or a transmission outage. What are what are we telling members that, you know, okay, yeah, I couldn't get through. I couldn't get through. Is it just continue to keep trying and oh, know yes. that we're we're getting to it. It's not that we're ignoring it by yep. any means. It's it's just that the phone lines are busy and um, you know, that's kind of what you're you're asking them to do is yeah, you might not get through, but keep calling. Keep calling yes. So we know because you might be in a completely different scenario. Maybe we have a an outage in um, that's not related to this yeah. scenario. Uh, you know, so again, it's it's still the calling part of it, uh, but 
you know, for your main point is you pretty much right off the bat went to Kurt and said, hey, we have an outage. Mm -hmm. um, Kim is kind of doing the same thing. You know, we're, we're about an outage. You're communicating amongst yourselves. Yeah. But uh, for the most part, you know, like we said, you want people to just keep calling yes. because that's the best way that we can. You know, keep calling. And, like, and it's good call. Like, like I said, somebody might say, well, I saw a tree. Well, that helps get our crews in the right direction, too, because we wouldn't normally know that. But, you know, a couple of people called and said, oh, I called because I was on the end of the line, you know, and apologize for calling. But we don't, I mean, we want people to call no matter what, because it helps us pinpoint the root of the problem and get the crews out there faster. Right. Yep. So there you have it. So as we went through kind of talking to Nicole, Kim, um, Kurt, you know, you kind of got the, the main point is to keep calling and we'll, we'll get, we'll get it figured out, but never feel like you can't call. Um, we have multiple resources. Uh, you know, we can use Facebook or you can use the website to email us, but calling is definitely the, the best way you can go about it. And that's more than just our substation notice that we have here. This is this is in general at any time, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in the event that it's after hours, it goes to our uh, cooperative response center, our CRC, yeah. and they have all the information on our system. You know, that's that's how that works. And we work very closely with them. They handle phones when we're doing meetings or uh, after hours, that's that's who we use for our first call phones. I mean, they're that's what they're trained to do, correct? Mm -hmm. That's that's their job is to answer these kinds of calls. So, again, call us at all times. Um, we're there to help you. We want to get you power back on as fast as we can, as safely as we can. Uh, but we need to know the information from you as well. So, thanks, Nicole. Okay, so there you have it. You were able to hear from Kurt, Kim, and Nicole here at uh, REC, and hopefully that gives you a little bit of perspective on uh, the different avenues, like I said before in our in our intro of what's actually going on at the co-op when we do have outages and how it's it's definitely a team effort on all on all fronts. Uh, everybody's got their role to play, and fortunately for us, we got a we got an unbelievable staff. Uh, you know, our senior staff has entrusted a lot of everybody to kind of handle their own situations. Everybody kind of has a pretty good idea of what's going to be happening. Um, you know, we have a great system as, you know, reiterating the fact that members, you need to call. That's that's just the best thing. No matter if the phones are overloaded, just give us a call. That's that's how we know where these where these outages are. Uh, it helps move things along a little bit faster and we can we can pinpoint these outages faster. And again, when we do have outages like that, you know, it's it's important to know that we could have a separate outage that we're not getting calls on. So just because you might think that, that's that could be a completely different scenario. Uh, when we do have, you know, bad storms, it's that's when it's even more important is, you know, we could have st outages throughout the county and uh, you know, somebody could be out for a while and you might not even know it if we don't if we don't hear from you. So granted, we do have great technology that helps with that. But by getting a call from you and the members that that really reassures that that's that's where we're at and uh, can help us confirm that you are out of power. So, uh, you know, by by being able to hear from these folks, uh, you know what they actually do. I hope that gives you a little bit of an insight, um, you know, as to all the different roles that people are playing. You know, our linemen obviously are taking care of our members and making sure that we get power back on safely. Uh, they're they're working pretty hard on that. So. Um, kudos to them. They just had their lineman appreciation day. So if you do see them, uh, make sure you tell them thank you and for all their hard work that they're doing. You know, obviously the inside staff, they're answering phone calls, uh, trying to pinpoint where these outages are on their maps. You know, line, line superintendent Kurt and COO uh, Larry are, you know, handling the dispatching on making sure the crews are going to the direct, their best possible location that they can, um, you know, to get to get people on quicker. Uh, if we have a large outage, they're going to be working on that large outage to try and get those people on. So again, there's a lot of different aspects that go into uh, an outage like that. But when it comes to a substation outage or a, a transmission outage, that plays into a whole different role of of the communication side on what people are actually going through. So again, I hope that you, uh, I hope that this gives you a little bit more insight. I'd like to do more of these as, as time goes on to to kind of give you a better understanding of what might be happening here at the co-op. And it's going to be a very busy summer for us. Uh, you know, obviously we are going to be building our new building but uh, more importantly is we're going to have our annual meeting annual meeting coming up in a couple weeks uh, you should have all started to receive your annual report calendars and again thank you for all those people that submitted their their photos they're wonderful i know our members are really going to appreciate them and they're going to get a lot of enjoyment out of them uh, but again the most important part is to, to get those ballots in uh, make sure that you're signing the outside envelope you know that's that's a Wisconsin state statute. That's not even up to us. Uh, in order to do mail-in ballots, you have to sign that envelope. Uh, you know if they don't, they 
don't even get counted they won't even be open so again it's very important that we that we do those uh, remember that we are at our temporary office at 45 east rob road that's where you can actually drop off the ballots there i'm actually looking at it across the road from our service center here so we got a little drop box there for you very secure uh, you can stop in at the second window and probably talk to Ellen uh, she'd be happy to take your ballots as well so anyways I hope that you guys all have a fantastic Easter weekend um, sounds like it's gonna be Wisconsin and it's gonna be a, a miserable cold sunny sounds like just like an Easter weekend so hopefully you get some enjoyment out of it anyways and that uh, you're able to get together with some family and some friends and I hope you all take care all right thank you guys